Greetings. George Parrott coming to you today from our CMM headquarters in Fort Mill, South Carolina. We just got back from an exciting trip to Italy and Switzerland, and we'll put on our website and Facebook pages some updates about that trip and the great things that the Lord did. We always give the Lord the glory. And this morning in, in prayer, the Lord was putting on my heart some of the our friends who are part of our CMM global family network of missionaries and pastors are in some really isolated places out on the front lines. And they look to us for, for fellowship and uh, friendship and a listening ear as they battle on the front lines. Some are in very dangerous places, life-threatening places. Some have been beaten and imprisoned, had their churches uh, torn down or burnt or destroyed. And this is for you. And it could be also for those of our friends here in America, uh, intercessors and uh, financial partners who support CMM, but to give you a little bit of, of an idea so that you know how to pray for each other, to pray for the expansion of the kingdom around the world in these end times that we're in. And I call this a scene with the eyes of eternity. You know, in our busy schedules, our busy lifestyles, a lot of times the pressures of, of life keeps us very busy, but we need to uh, spend time listening to the Lord, studying His Word every day. I love getting up in the morning when it's quiet, before it gets too busy, and spending time just listening and just uh, worshiping the Lord and standing in awe, being overwhelmed by His love for each of us, by His plans and purposes and how He knew from before the foundation of the world that we'd be here right now. He, he knows each of us better than we know ourselves. And you know that we read in John 6, 29, that the work of the Father is to believe. We think work a lot of times is activities and doing things. And we know that uh, it's only by faith that we please the Lord. And that uh, the only time it talks about uh, striving in the Bible is to strive to enter into his rest. And it's when we're in his rest that we can hear clearly, that we have the clarity, that we have the peace we can hear the voice of our shepherd more clearly when we're in this quiet place. And so I want to help uh, encourage you to, to block out the, uh, the busyness and the distractions of the world and our work schedules, to spend time with the Lord each day, even if you have to get up early or wake up in the middle of the night. Use that time productively of uh, worshiping the Lord, exalting His holy name, and then listening and being still and knowing that he is the Lord. And in John 6, 29, this is from the New King James Version. We read, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. That's Jesus saying, and you know, we often hear people um, full of um, anxiety, or sometimes even terror or over, uh, overloaded with the concerns and the cares of life, of their circumstances. And we need to learn to uh, direct our thoughts, you know, subject every thought to the mind of Christ, bring every thought captive to the mind of Christ, and to be able to, to get away, to seal ourselves off in our prayer closet, wherever that might be. For some, it may be driving a car or walking in the woods or quiet time at home before everyone else in the family is awake, and getting alone with the Lord, and then believing His Word I'm still learning what this means about the work of the Father is to believe. In John 14, 13 and 14, we read, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, we have this confident assurance in Jesus Christ alone, that our confidence is in Christ alone. It's not in our, our ourselves or our personalities, but in our identity being strong and firm and confident in Christ alone, we can stand on his word and block out the thoughts from the enemy or from ourselves or from the dark side or from the media and say, I'm going to stand on his word. And he says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. We know that if we pray according to his will, that Jesus, our high priest and our chief intercessor, sits at the right hand of the throne of God, 
night and day on our behalf, interceding before our Father God for us. And so as we align our lives with him in, in a surrendered, yielded fashion, and we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek him, he'll not only heal our own lives and help us stand for uh, righteousness and truth, living a life of holiness, uh, consecrated and set apart for the glory of the Lord, that we can ask of him and knowing that it will be done if we ask according to his name, the name of Jesus. And lastly, I want to leave you with this from Deuteronomy 31a. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. So know that from before the foundation of the world, he knows how your life is going to play out, how your life will be lived. He gives us a free will, but then also remember the faith of God is so strong that he will not let us get away. We can, uh, we can wander, we can fail, we can fall, but the Bible says that he restores the righteous man. He picks up the righteous man seven times. And our God loves you so perfectly, he will not let you get away. So you can just give up and surrender and trust him and seek him and inquire of the Lord like King David did in the Old Testament and ask the Lord honest questions. Reveal yourself to him. He knows us already better than we know ourselves, but he wants to hear it from your lips as you release uh, the words, the 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 uh, the hurts or the wounds or whatever's going on in your life, and you share honestly with the Lord, He'll come to you and He'll meet you. And as you wait and you sit still, you can hear His voice and know how He is comforting you and how He loves you in a pure way that no one else can. So this says in Deuteronomy 31, 8 again, And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. So right now I come against the attacks of the enemy on your life and your family and your ministry. And we just pray the blood of Jesus and the bloodlines of Jesus around you and yours and your, your family and your ministry and your congregation and your church or fellowship. And we just declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that you would just take time, whatever you have to do, even if you have to cancel appointments, to get with God so that this will be a, a threshold from this point forward of going into this new season, the next season, with a fresh hope and a confidence in Christ alone. So be encouraged this day. Let us know how we can pray for you. And we love you, but, but the Lord loves you perfectly, way more than any man or woman can. So God bless you and thank you for your time.